All right, quiet, please. Waiting on you. Coming at you, ready? Coming at you, get ready. All right, let's get things going here. Uh, Close the door, please. Come back. Wow. Everybody else, uh, let's go to silence, please, so I can talk and you can hear. Uh, so, I mean, there's four days that uh, are like just a lot of work, and we're we're on day three of four. So we already done two, and that's just multiplying with decimals. Um, just so you know, and I've said it a couple times, multiplying with decimals is not a seventh grade standard, meaning like you're introduced to it, you're taught it for the first time. It is a mastery skill that you're supposed to walk into this class with. Like, I know how to multiply with decimals. Now, since it's such a critical task for the stuff that we're going to do this year, this is why in this book they review it. Uh, same thing with today's class, which is on dividing with decimals. It's a review, right? However, uh, as a realist, as a math teacher who, who's taught for quite a few years, I know what happens when I get some seventh graders they don't have this skill mastered, so they need extra practice on this. I choose to do two days of email as one day in the book. I choose to do day, two days of both multiplying and dividing, just so that I don't have to deal with, you know, three, three months down the road, we find out you still can't multiply, you know, decimal numbers together. And we're trying to do, I don't know, solving the volume of a pyramid, and you can't do it because you still can't multiply with decimal. So I choose to do two days of this. So there is a little bit of pain involved. A few of you probably absolutely 100% have it mastered. Some of you definitely needed to practice though. So any questions on the homework? Uh, the homework was that worksheet, 3.8B. Yes? Um, I just want to say that something's wrong with this stranger. Okay, cool. Uh, any questions on the worksheets? All right, so what I'm going to do is, first off, I'm going to um, point out the people who don't have their homework in front of them. Right? Like I asked. Hey, your job as a student is to do your homework and turn it in. If you do it, if you one day, you know, out of six months, you forget one homework assignment, you won't catch any grief from me. But when I see it's a pattern hmm, from you two, what? right, that's not a good thing. Right? If you need a better system of organization, you know, please seek me out during student advisement. I'll help you organize yourself so you don't collect done. things. Right? Done. right, but where is it? Uh, right? uh, the second part of it is to turn it in so I can see your work and we can both confirm that in fact you do know how to, in this case, multiply with decimals. So you're basically you don't turn in your homework, I don't know. I also can't give you any feedback. I can't help you if you in fact need help, right? Also, uh, homework is uh, 15, one five percent of your grade. It's a completion grade, it's not an accuracy grade. All you have to do is do your homework, you get a free 15%. Literally, one five. That means if you got an F, you got a 59, yet you turn in all your homework, 59 plus 15 is 74. You got a passing grade just by doing your homework, even though you technically failed the course. I don't have that happen too often. But I'm just going to point out the kid that does their homework all the time and turns it in, right? You get a free 15% on your grade. That almost guarantees you an A if you're a good to an average student, right? Wait. Students that don't do their homework are also the students that, well, they're not getting the master of the skill and they, they typically don't do too well. And just so you realize, you know, at LTA, we, we don't, what's what's called socially promote. We don't promote you to the eighth grade simply because you sit here and you breathe oxygen. You got to work to make it to eighth grade. If you choose to fail, if you choose to fail, it is a choice you make. It doesn't just happen. You decide not to do your homework, you decide not to study for the test, you decide not to pay attention to class. If you choose to fail, we will fail you, right? With a heavy heart, we will fail you, but we will fail you nonetheless. All right, uh, pass this out, collect homework, and everyone else, write this down. 
So, uh, calendar, we just finished that quiz on Monday. Uh, next week, we have two classes, uh, and then we'll take check test on Thursday. Here's your homework. Write it down. Uh, this will be, once again, a painful exercise in long division because I gave you, well, I didn't give you 27 because I'm giving you the odds. Um, I gave you the odds, one, because I want to make sure that you can check your answers to make sure you are, in fact, getting them correct. All right, what's going on here? Are we, uh, we are not going to grade the homework. I'm going to grade the homework. Eight. Hold on, hold on. I got it. All right. So I'm going to say it again. With multiplying with decimals, I recommended that many of you use uh, graph paper. The same thing with long division. I'm going to recommend you use graph paper, especially for those that have sloppy handwriting. The graph paper will keep your numbers in a box, one uh, number per box, and it keeps things, everything lined up perfectly. If you have perfect handwriting, which there's only one or two of you in this class, right, uh, then you probably don't need graph paper. For the rest of us, it just makes it easier. It's not a requirement, but it certainly makes it easier. What's your comment? If they're too small, well, then obviously you got to use something else. Um, well, if they're too small, I'll just say, uh, you know, there are other techniques, but, I'm, but what I'm going to, you know, urge you to do is find a way so you can line the numbers up. Not, not 50% of the time, but a good proportion of the time, you know, I don't know, 25% or so, people make mistakes simply because the numbers aren't lined up and they can't read their own handwriting. Yeah. What if you just took a standard piece of paper and then took and lined it? Yeah, yeah, that's that would be my recommendation. Right. I know me as uh, when I was in your position in seventh grade, my handwriting would tend to get smaller and move in an upward direction as I went from left to right. Like I found it really hard to have my numbers all look the same size, and so when I got to things like Decimal long division, it really hurt me because I just had horrible handwriting. What? All right. So uh, here we go. So dividing with decimals. Dividing with decimals. Okay. So typically when I say dividing with decimals. Really? That's usually the reaction that I get, right? No, that's just the first All right, so just get over it. Yes, we're going to do a bunch of these. We're going to spend two days doing this just like we did with multiplying with decimals. Some of you probably only need one day as a quick review. Some of you absolutely 100%. Both in this class and the other class, I've had people come to tutoring that truly can't do this, right? They understand the process, but the doing it part, they need a lot of work at this, right? If you're in seventh grade. We're not in fourth or fifth grade when you first learned this, right? We use this skill this year. So, uh, as always, in box number one, I have given you the steps, right? I don't need you to write them down. Uh, plus, this is the way that I interpret it, right? I'm not saying that I have the, the perfect method here, but generally speaking, these are the steps. There's four of them, all right? Uh, let's just do a couple together. First off, in box number two, I want you to write down everything that's in here in the box, just so that we can all agree upon the terminology, definitions uh, of names of things, and the procedure of lining things up correctly in the long division format. All right. On the left there, it says eight divided by two. Okay. We call eight, anyone, the? Divisor. We call eight not the divisor. We call it, thank you, one person remembered it. We, re we call number eight the dividend. Obviously, the division symbol, we're used to that. We call number two divisor. the divisor. 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 Notice I've made it color-coded to show you what happens here. It turns out that when you throw this format, the one on the left, into the long division format, the numbers flip, uh, flip around. The two, which is the divisor, is now the first number. The eight, which is the dividend, is now the second number. So first off, wrap your head around that. 
that if you see it printed or in your book, like on the left, this will be tonight for homework, to put it into the long division format, you need to flip the numbers around. You're like, why would I do that? I already know the answer is four. Okay, great. This won't be the problem tonight. It'll be much more challenging. The answer has a special name. The answer is called the somebody? Quotient. quotient. The answer is called the quotient. So divisor. Oh, by the way, this is a long division symbol, right? Uh, and the answer, which in this case is four, is called the quotient. And we all know that uh, in long division, it goes at the very top. Now, if we were doing a problem like this for real, then we probably wouldn't have this class. It would be simple. These are just, uh, you know, math facts that we memorize. Today, we will be doing it with decimals. And it's called long division. And it is of anything that you do, I would argue in math, this is the toughest thing that you will ever do in math. I would argue that. Why? It involves a little bit of guessing, a whole lot of checking, and you have to have solid math facts. It also has even more steps, actual math steps, than multiplying the numbers together. What's that trigonometry? Trigonometry is simple compared to long division. Yeah, long division. I'm just gonna say long division in, in, the, in, the, in the actual act of doing it is the toughest thing that you will do. Right now, trigonometry would look impossible to you because it hasn't been taught to you. When I teach you trigonometry, you'll be like, okay, I got it. It's not, not that big of a deal. Right now, it certainly looks complicated. All right, hands down. I know, but there's, I haven't talked about anything yet that there will be a question about. We'll get there. So in box number three, I've got one set up for you. We'll start off really simple and we'll get more complicated. So I've already got it set up in the long division format. Just remember, six is the divisor, 25.2 is the dividend. The answer, or, or what we call the quotient, will go on top. Now, I'm going to show you the steps, then we can make some comments or questions. So here we go. So step number one says, put the numbers in the correct positions. Well, that's already been done for you. I'll, I'll just say, the number, I don't know, three mistake that I see that people make is they put the numbers in the wrong spots. I'm like, well, how would they, yeah, they do that. They literally put the wrong numbers. Sometimes you look at the numbers, you're like, well, I don't know. I thought the small number was supposed to go on the outside, and the big number goes, it doesn't work that way. You put the numbers where they need to go. You can divide a large number into a small number. You can divide a small number into a large number. It doesn't matter at this point. Step number two, this is the one that uh, uh, I will see kids even in seventh grade make a mistake on. I don't care how many decimal places are in the dividend. I don't care. I only care how many decimal places are in the divisor. You have to look at the divisor. So I look at the divisor, and if it isn't a whole number, I gotta make it a whole number. I gotta make it a whole number. That is always step number two once you place the numbers in. I don't care how many decimal places the dividend has, only the divisor. Hey, is the divisor a whole number, yes or no? Yes. So this one I don't have to do anything to. I don't care that it's got a decimal place. I don't care. I only look at the divisor. Now, if the divisor has a decimal, then you kind of know how that story goes, but we'll do that one for another one. Okay, so step number two, there's nothing to do. What I would recommend so that you don't make a mistake is once this process of moving the decimal around, you guys all familiar with that, is to move the, de the decimal place immediately to the top. I want you to move the decimal place immediately to the top. This is kind of my suggestion. Some math teachers wouldn't make the suggestion. This is my suggestion. I move it immediately to the top so I never have to worry about it again. I'm done with decimal places. If you're doing this in a uh, graph paper, things line up perfectly. If you're doing this by hand, you've got to be careful, especially if some of your numbers are fat and some of your numbers are skinny. That decimal place can cause problems. That's why I move it to the top. Now I don't need to worry about it. Yes. So after you put the Forget about it. It's done. I mean, it, it's right exactly where it needs to go for the answer. For adding and subtracting, you drop it straight down. For multiplying, you wait to the very end and count decimal places. For dividing by long division, you simply move it directly to the top. Now be careful. You know, we, this is not one of those ones where we had to move it. We have to move it, we move it, and then move it directly to the top. All right, here we go. Step number four is the hardest one. 
I take a look at the divisor, in this case it's six, and I say, how many times does six go into two? Nine. Now some math books, some math teachers either have you put an X or a dash. I like zeros, right? Uh, but if you were taught with X's or just leave it blank, I don't like the leave it blank. The leave it blank causes problems. And the reason is that you forget where the next number goes. If I put a zero, well, there's a digit there. It takes up that empty space right there. Some books will put little tiny X's or a dash. If you see like a minus sign or an X, maybe you have, maybe you have. Okay. Well, six didn't go into two, so then I increase the digit. I add one more digit. Now it's 25. Is six going to 25? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, this was an easy. How many times? Four times. Okay. Now I do multiplication. Four times six. Now I'll have kids not know how to line it up. The four is directly above what number? Five. So the, when I write 24, that four, not the four, four in the multiplication, but the four in the answer needs to go directly underneath the five. So I put 24 and I subtract. How do I know I made a good guess? Oh, by the way, this is a guess. Oh, well. How do I know I made a good guess? Yes. Because if you, you can't go up another six, because if you go up another six, you'll be over and you can't go down another six. Because you I know it's a good guess because when I do subtraction, what happens? In one mile. I get a number that is smaller than six. six. Oh. When you do, you got to do the subtraction first. But when I do the subtraction, if you get a number that's smaller than your divisor, you made a good guess. And I'm going to call it a guess. Because as soon as we get to the more complicated one, it's a darn sure it's a guess. You don't know if it works or not. Okay. We drop down the next digit. We, in this case, a two, straight down. And then we repeat the process. The six, now I'm not looking at this anymore. I'm looking at where it says one, two. The six going to 12. Yeah, How many times? Two. Notice there's only one other spot to put it. The decimal's already where it needs to go, so the two goes right there. Notice that all of my numbers now are all lined up. This is why I encourage you to use graph paper. Graph paper, you'll be forced. Hey, there's a box there with nothing in there. I've got to put a number there. Sloppy handwriting, I don't know. The numbers just kind of squeeze in there some way, and you're kind of guessing whether it's correct or not. Yeah, 2 times 6 is 12. We subtract. We continue this process until we get 0. You will not have remainders this year. You continue the process until it either says round, or you actually get to the answer. Yeah. Uh, what if it goes on forever? If it goes on forever and it repeats, we'll talk about that in okay. another class. Another class, another class. I know, how to do that, I know you should, because it's not something I teach in seventh grade. But if it's one of those that goes on for a long time, right? The book, and you'll see it tonight for homework, it'll say round to the nearest tenth or hundred. Okay, something like that. Yeah. My teaching uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. We're, we're not there yet. Yes. Um, and I will teach you the same thing. How many numbers would you? How many numbers would you have to go out before you would round it? Well, uh, has anybody got their homework book open? What does it say for the instructions? So nearest tenth or hundred, I believe it goes back and forth. Okay. So check that. Oh, we're going to do something. All right. Um, and just make sure you write the answer off to the side somewhere so you can read it especially those that have very sloppy handwriting. Notice I left off the zero because it says it's 0, 4, like 4, this? 2. Yes? Do we have to keep the zero in that first spot? Uh, I'm just going to say the kids that don't put the zero in the first spot eventually, and it's usually not when it's in the first spot. It's like when there's a zero, zero or something like that. They forget, and all of a sudden they have numbers in the wrong spot. I am a big fan of always putting a zero when you're doing the work. It doesn't was, take that much time. Can you put a zero with the cross here? You can, yeah, that's even a you know, better idea. Yes. Sure. Okay. Uh, now, what can go wrong? Let me give you two examples of what can go wrong. Now, I keep saying guessing. You'll see why when we do the next example. There wasn't much guessing on this one. But let's just say that you think that, well, six goes into two zero times. But when you say six goes into 24, you make a bad guess. And so maybe you guess. Seven. Well, 18 would be way too big. So it's always going to be a number less than 10. What about, what about I don't know, maybe you guess three, right? 
As long as you do good math, even though your guess is incorrect, it'll you'll figure it out. You made a bad guess. If you think three times six is twenty-four, well then we got problems, right? But if you make a bad guess, it is a guess. Three times six is eighteen. When you do the subtraction, look what happens. Twenty-five minus eighteen is seven. We got a result that is bigger than our divisor. That's how you know you need to make a change. So instead of guessing a three, you guess a four. Okay. Now what would happen if we guess too much? Okay. Well, I'll go zero times, and then you say, I don't know, maybe it goes five times. When you do the multiplication, granted, we see this one immediately, but when the numbers are larger and weird, like it's 262 into 14,000, it's a guess. In this case, five times six is 30. When we try to do subtraction, it's too big. These are the two ways that you know whether it's wrong. Either your guess was too big, you're trying to subtract too much from the number, or when you guess too small, when you do the subtraction, what the result is, is larger than the divisor. Have you seen this before? Okay. All right. So now let's see what homework will look like. Homework will look something like this. Put your pencils down, watch me work through one. Okay. Homework, this is how they will present the problem. Okay. 65 and 1 tenth divided by 5 and 25 hundredths. Okay. You're going to go back to box number two, and you're going to make sure that things get placed in the right position in the long division. All right? Who can do this right now? And they're sure to themselves that are make no mistakes. Okay, so our goal is by Monday, most of your hands are in the air. All right, so it will take practice, 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 practice. So I place the numbers in the right order. Notice they are backwards from what they appear. The divisor is the second number, the dividend is the first number. So when we throw that in the long division, the divisor ends up being the first number, the dividend becomes the second number. Okay, so this was the hard one, right? The first one was like ridiculously easy. Now comes the challenge. Now comes the guess and check model. You ready? Here we go. Hey, is the divisor a whole number? No. We need to make it a whole number. So how many decimal places do we move it? Two. If you move the divisor two places, guess what you have to do with the dividend? Move it two times. Once again, I don't care anything about the, the decimal and the, and the dividend. Granted, the dividend only has one decimal place, right? Yeah, I only better. care about the divisor. If the divisor has two, I move the dividend two, even though the dividend only has one. Yeah. Right? So this particular one, we're going to have to add zeros. So when we make the divisor into a whole number, right, we have to move it two decimal places. See what I did? So when I move this one, I got to move it two decimal, but there's only one, there's no more numbers, so you have to add a zero. Have to add a zero. Is this new to anyone? No, sort of, kind of. Okay. I, I, I barely touched on this thing in fifth grade. Okay. Well, remember last year was sixth grade. Yeah, I know, in fifth grade, but sixth grade, we did this, but then. We were start doing this during quarantine. But. Okay. So, you see where the decimal place is now. My recommendation is right now, move it directly to the top. So, right now, I'm going to move it directly to the top, and then I can forget about it. I don't need to worry about it anymore. It's in the right spot. Okay. Up to now, this is the easy part. The hard part is, can you stay away? Okay. Can you stand up? You know what we do in the Army when you fall asleep? They, they say, there's a 20 pound rock and they say go ahead grab that rock and hold it above your head and then for the rest of the class you stand there with a the rock over your head and if you fall asleep guess what happens you break your neck well the rock falls on your head you right? your no i never had to do that but i saw it done well, about 20 pounds one you get really tired but you're straining so it wakes you up it's actually a pretty effective technique but if, I, if you ever drop a rock on the head, I probably would get in trouble. So uh, I can't but, do that. No, wait, not a rock, but you know those 20 pound balls? I'm sure that would work better. <laughs> Maybe we should do 10 because. All right, all let's do this problem. Here we go. Uh, here is my suggestion. There's lots of trains of thought on how you approach this. For me, right, I do a bunch of rounding. You see this number? What's the number? 525, because we moved the decimal place. That's hard for me to count five. Like I can't count five twenty-fives a lot. So I just make it easier and I just round. 
525 is close to 500, right? If it was 585, then maybe we'd say 600, okay? I'm just going to round it to 500. I can count my 500s really quick. And I can do mental multiplication with 500 really quick. I can do mental multiplication with 600 really quick. What's 600 times 2? You just did mental multiplication. You did it in your head, not on a piece of paper. Okay. So here we go. So I'm going to consider this 500. How many times does 500 go into 6? Six. Zero times, right? It doesn't go into six, right? So uh, how many times does 500 go into 65? Zero. zero times. Notice I put it in zeros. A said let's put a zero with, a, with an X through it so he doesn't forget it. Oh, I can live with that. Does 500 go into 651? Yes. How many times? You can. X's are good. Some Sometimes they put dashes. Those will work. I just want you to put something. So that when you put your first guess, it goes in the right spot. You just said 500 goes into 650, 50, 651. How many times? One. So I put a one. Now I do multiplication. Now watch me. One times five? Uh, five. It's going to go directly underneath the one. One times two? Two. Directly underneath the five. One times five? Five. Goes underneath the six. You see how everything lined up nice and neat? Do we know if it's the right guess? Not until we do subtraction. Well, I should say this. If, if you multiply and you get a number bigger than 651, then you know it's the wrong guess. You gotta decrease it by one. But until I do subtraction, I don't know if it's a good guess or a bad guess. Yes? So you have to move the over twice, which is the and then you have to move it? Yes. But this is my suggestion. Ace says that he can look at 525 and do math with that. I would agree that some of you probably could. I'm just going to say for the rest of us out there, I can't count my 525. So I'm going to make it a friendlier number so that I can make a guess. The one is a guess. It's not guaranteed until you do the math that it's right. Well, let's do the math. Now we got to subtract. Well, we can't do 5 from 11, so we borrow 1 from the 5. Uh, 5 from 11 is 6 now, but now the 5 is a 4. 2 from 4 is a 2, and 5 from 6 is 1, right? So I get, what, 126? Was it a good guess or a bad guess? Good guess. How do I know it was a good guess? Because it's less than 500. I got a smaller number than 525. This is a hard, hard step right here, yes? Uh, you said you can't subtract 5 from 1. I said we can't subtract 5 from 1, so we got to borrow 1 from the 5. Yeah. Becomes a four. The one becomes an eleven. Okay, I meant five from one. All right. Yes. Numbers are out of order. Which one? Well, like, well, I'm not talking about out of order. They're just like they're not in the line. Yeah. So yours are even going to be worse than mine. You don't even. You're not even using PowerPoint, right? So they're slightly off, but they're pretty close. Yes. It says he can. Uh, well, let's let's not. Yes. So, but if it's like fifteen point six. Well, let's go through the problem. Okay. So we got 126. We good? Yeah. Well, 525 doesn't go into 126. So we bring down the next decimal value, or in this case, the value is zero. We drop it straight down. Now it's 1260. Once again, right? You got to be able to count by 525, or you make the number friendlier. 500. How many times is 500? Going to 1,260. See how easy that is if you make the numbers friendlier? We're not guaranteed that two is the answer. It might be three. But we do, can, we can make a quick guess if we make it a friendlier number. This is how I was taught doing long division, make it a friendlier number. Uh, as the number gets closer to uh, even, like 550, then you got problems, right? Sometimes you're, you'll have your guesses more than often be wrong, right? All right, but well we're going to guess two, and let's do the math. Two times five is ten. Carrier one. There's a lot of carrying going on. There's a lot of borrowing going on. It's a combination of both multiplication and division, or should I say, uh, a multiplication and addition. Uh, two times five is ten. Carrier one. Two times four is two. Plus one is five. We get ten fifty. Was it a good guess? Yes. Okay. Now we got to subtract. Uh, zero one. Two. 
Zero, one, two. So we got 210. It was a great guess. Imagine zero. If it was a bad guess, we get a number that's bigger than 525. If 1050 was bigger than 1260, it was also a bad guess. We got neither of those. Now we got to add a zero. This can go on for a long, long time. Hopefully it ends right here. Okay, once again, this isn't 525 or for our guess, we're gonna make it 500. How many times does 500 go into 2,100? Pretty easy to make that guess, right? So our guess is four. Once again, my decimal place was already where it needed to go. I don't need to worry about moving it. It's already there. It turns out that four times 525 is 2,100. Yes. Um, Agree, that's why I did it. Uh, most of the time, I do the examples from the book so that when you go home and you're like, wait, this looks like the one we didn't cross. Yes, because it is the one we didn't cross. There, there's a lot of them that you have to rank. There are a lot that you have to rank. Correct. Okay. So the nice thing about putting those initial zeros is I can read the answer immediately. I don't have to worry about, wait, wait, were there supposed to be zeros here or not? Hey, it's 12.4 and that's your answer. Yes? We're going to do progressively harder ones. This is box number five. Box number five. Notice, now we have an instruction that says round to the nearest tenth. If we're rounding to the nearest tenth, listen, please. If we're rounding to the nearest tenth, how many decimal places do I need to go in order to round to the nearest tenth? Why two and not one? How do you round? You always look to the... Number to the right. Number to the right. So that means if you're rounding to the nearest tenth, you need to go one more decimal place in your answer. We got to go to the hundreds because we're going to look at well, the tenth is the is the uh, significant digit, but we got to look one decimal place to the right of that in order to know whether we need to make the tenth one larger or keep it the same. Did that make sense? Yes. Tonight for homework it says round to the nearest hundredth. Guess how many decimal places you need to go? Yeah. Three, because we got to look to the right. The ones to the tenth, you gotta, you gotta go, you gotta do the division until you have two decimal places. Want to say round to the nearest? Does it say round to the nearest thousands? Any of the ones? Uh, or is it just tens and hundreds? Uh, just tens and hundreds. So it's either two decimal places for tenths, three decimal places for hundreds. Okay. Let's do this together. Grab your pencils. Remember, when it's written like this, the numbers flip flop. The divisor is the one point two five. The dividend is 3.154. Yeah, and that's kind of close, right? Okay. I can't stress this enough. I still will see students in seventh grade say, well, the dividend had three decimal places. I had to move it three decimal. I don't care about the dividend. I only care about the divisor. How many decimal places are in the divisor? Two. So I need to move the dividend two. The dividend still stays a, a decimal number. Don't, I don't care. The divisor has to be a whole number. So if we move that two decimal place, just be careful with your loops. And we move the dividend to the decimal places and then move the decimal place straight to the top. Now I'm done with the decimal place. I don't have to worry about it again. Okay, you see the dividend, I'm sorry, the divisor, what's the number? 125. I can't count by 125. So I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna make it about 100. Because I can do math with 100 really quickly. Okay. Some would argue that 125, yeah, I can do math with that really quickly as well, too. All right, what's 125 times 9? See what I mean? What's 100 times 9? 900. Way quicker, right? All right, does 125 go into 3? That is 0. Does 125 go into 31? That is zero. Does 125 go into 315? Yes. How many that's times? Three. It appears that it goes three times. Now that's your guess. So if I write a three, watch what happens. Three times five is 15. Ooh, the fives line up. Carry one. Three times two is six. Uh-oh, we got a problem, Houston. We got a number that's bigger than 315, so guess what you got to do? I'll go lower. I have to go lower. So here's where decimal long division causes issues. You absolutely 100% make a guess. Hopefully it's a good guess. And you're not doing erasing, but occasionally you make a bad guess and we have to do some erasing. Now I'm doing it on a whiteboard with PowerPoint. My erasing is perfect. Yours will get messy. 
So be careful. Yes. One thousand one hundred. No, it only goes two times. No, the nine times. Right. All right. So in this case, instead of a three, we're going to guess a two. And now when we do the math, two times five is ten. Zero carry one. Two times two is four. Plus one is five. Two times one is two. So we get two fifty. So when we do the subtraction this time, we get a number that's smaller than 315, and we can do the subtraction. Hey, I get I got 65. That's good. Smaller than 125. Jaden, you're supposed to be doing this. Okay. Uh, we said rather the nearest tenth. I don't even have a decimal place yet. I gotta keep going. So I drop down the four. Everybody with me? Once again, I'm still going to consider this to be 100, 100, not 125, so I can do the math easy. How many times does 100 go into 654? Six. The last time we made our guess, we were one too big. Whenever that happens to me, guess what I do? Go one too small. I always guess one smaller, then maybe I won't have to do it erasing. Did that make sense? The first time we did it when we guessed three, we were one too large. It was a good guess, it just was too large. If I ever see that happen, then the next time I do it, I'm probably going to guess one less and see what happens. So instead of guessing 100 goes into 654 six times, I'm going to guess it goes five times. All right, stop what you're doing. Listen up. Stop what you're doing. Sit. And listen up. All right, do we think we have enough knowledge to do the homework? No. Yes. no. no. All right. Yes. All right. Who said no? Okay. Where's your lack of knowledge? Do you have at least the two examples that we just did? Stop what you're doing and listen. Give it a shot. Who else is confused? Okay. You have the two examples written down. Give it a shot. Follow the two examples. All right. I gave you one through 20. Stop what you're doing. Hey, you're using up your own time. I gave you one through 27 odds. Some of you can get through all of that, no big deal in 30 minutes. Others of you, mm, so it might take a little bit of time. So what's a reasonable amount of time that I want you to work on this this weekend? 20 minutes. Uh, let's have a compromise and say 45 minutes. I don't want you to work more than 45 minutes on this. Because we'll come back on Monday, we're gonna do this again. So, 45 minutes of homework on the map. If you can get to the whole thing, great. If not, so it'll be, it would be 50.6 around to 15.7. Yes, you as well. Watch. So, you got 15.6666, right? Where's the tenth place? Look to the right. What's the number? Bigger than five, so this goes up by one to fifteen point seven. Four point three 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 would be just the four point three. This three is not bigger than five. All right, e-learners, if you have any issues, send me an email. Remember, for e-learners, I put all the grades in the great book for you guys on Saturday. So I'll be grading all of your homework that you did this week tomorrow on Saturday. All right, Josh, have a good weekend. Do something fun. Um, can I